Book 1, Chapter 7, Anastasia's Reign. I think the most unusual mystical phenomena I witnessed during my time in the forest was Anastasia's ability to see not only individuals at great distance, distance, but also what was going on in their lives. Possibly other recluses have had a similar ability. She did this with the help of an, of an invisible ray. She maintained this with something everybody has. But people don't know about it and are unable to make use of it. Man has still not invented anything that is not already in nature. The technology behind television is but a poor imitation of the possibilities of this ray. The ray being invisible, I didn't believe it, in it, in spite of her repeated attempts to demonstrate and explain how it worked, to find some proof or plausible explanation. And then one day, tell me, Vladimir, what do you think daydreams are? And do many people dream of the future? Daydreaming, I think a lot of people are able to do that. It's when you imagine yourself in a future of your own desire. Fine. So you do not deny that man has the capacity to visualize his own future, to visualize very specific situations. That I don't deny. And what about intuition? Intuition is probably the feeling one has when instead of analyzing what or why something might happen, some sort of feeling suggests the right thing to do. So you do not deny that in man there exists something besides ordinary anal anal analytical reasoning that helps him determine his own and others' behavior. Well, let's say that's true. Wonderful, good, exclaimed Anastasia. Now the night dream, the night dream, what is that? The dreams almost all people have when they are asleep. The night dream, that's, I really don't know what, what that is. When you're asleep, a dream is simply a dream. All right, all right, let us call it just a dream. But you do not deny it exists. You and other people are aware that someone in a dream state, when his body is almost beyond the control of a part of his consciousness, can see people and all sorts of things going on. Well, that, I think, is something nobody will deny. But still, in a dream, people can communicate, hold conversations, empathize. Yes, they can. And what do you think? Can a person control his dream? Call up in the dream images and events he would like to see? Just like on ordinary television, for example. I don't think that would work for anyone. The dream somehow comes all by itself. You are meant wrong. Man can control everything. Man is designed to control everything. The ray I am telling you about consists of information one possesses. Concepts, intuition, emotional feelings, and as a result of dreamlike visions consciously controlled by man's will. How can a dream be controlled in a dream? Not in a dream, wide awake, as if pre-programmed and with absolute accuracy. You only experience this in a dream and it is chaotic. Man has lost most of his ability to control to control natural phenomena in himself. 
So he has decided that a night dream is simply an incidental byproduct of his tired brain. In fact, almost everybody on the earth, well, maybe I should try helping you see something at a distance right here and now. Go ahead. Lie down on the grass and relax. Let go so that your body draws less energy. It is important that you are comfortable. Nothing in the way. Now think about the person you know best. Your wife, for example. Recollect her habits. How she walks, her clothing, where you think she might be right now. And turn the whole thing over to your imagination. I remembered my wife knowing that at that moment she might be at our country home. I imagined the house and some of the furnishings and things. I remembered a great deal and in some detail, but I didn't see anything. I told Anastasia about all this and she replied, you are not able to let go all the ways as though you were going to go to sleep. I shall help you. Close your eyes. Stretch out your arms in different directions. Closing my eyes, I felt her fingers touch mine. I began to immerse myself in a dream or a wakeful doze. There was my wife standing in the kitchen of our country home. Over her usual dressing gown, she was wearing a knitted cardigan. That meant it was cold in the house. Again, some kind of trouble with the heating system. My wife was making coffee on the gas stove and something else in the small crock pot. My wife's face was gloomy and unhappy. Her movements were sluggish. All at once, she turned her head, tripped over to the window, looked out at the rain and smiled. The coffee on the stove was spilling over. She picked up the pot with its overflowing liquid, but didn't frown or get upset as she usually did. She took off the cardigan. I woke up. Well, did you see anything? asked Anastasia. I did indeed, but maybe it was just an ordinary dream. How could it be ordinary? Did you not plan on seeing your wife in particular? Yes, I did, and I saw her. But where is the proof that she was actually there in the kitchen at the moment I saw her in the dream? Remember this day and hour, Vladimir. If you want to have proof, when you get home, ask her. Was there not something else out of the ordinary that you noticed? Can't think of anything. You mean to say you did not notice a smile on your wife's face when she went over to the window? She was smiling and she did not get upset when the coffee spilled. That I did notice. She probably saw something interesting out the window, which made her feel good. All she saw out the window was rain. Rain which she never likes. So why was she smiling? I too was watching your wife through my ray, ray and warmed her up. So your ray warmed up, warmed her up. What about mine? Too cold. You were only looking out of curiosity. You did not put any feeling into it. So your way can warm people up at, di at a distance? Yes, it can do that. And what else can it do? Obtain certain kinds of information or transmit. It can cheer up a person's mood and partially take away someone's illness. There are a lot of other things it can do, depending on the energy available and the degree of feelings, will, and desire. And can you see the future? Of course, the past too.
the future and the past, they are pretty much the same thing. It is only the external details that are different. The essence always remains unchanged. How can that be? What can remain unchanged? Well, for example, a thousand years ago, people wore different clothes. They had different instruments at their disposal. But that is not the essence. Back a thousand years ago, just like today, people had the same feelings. Feelings are not subject to time. Fear, joy, love, just think. Yaroslav the wise, Ivan the terrible, and the Egyptian pharaohs were all capable of loving a woman with exactly the same feeling as you or any other man today. Interesting. Only I'm not sure what it means. You say every person can have a ray like this. Of course, everyone can. Even today, people still have feelings and intuitions. The capacity to dream of the future, to conjecture, to visualize specific situations, to have dreams while they sleep. Only it is all chaotic and uncontrollable. Maybe some kind of training necessary. Some exercises could be developed. Some exercises might help. But you know, Vladimir, there is one absolute condition before the ray can be controlled by the will. And what condition is that? It is absolutely necessary to keep one's thought pure. As the strength of the ray depends on the strength of the radiant feelings. Now there you go. Just when everything was starting to get clear. What have pure thoughts go to do with it? What have pure thoughts got to do with it? Radiant feelings. They are what power the ray. That's enough Anastasia. I'm already losing interest. Next, you'll be adding something else. I have already told you what is essential. You can say what you like, but you got too many darn conditions. Let's talk about something else. Something a little, a little simpler. All day long, Anastasia engages in meditation, visualization, all sorts of situations from our past, present, and future life. Anastasia possesses, possesses a phenomenal memory. She can remember a multitude of people she has seen in her imagination, all through her ray, and what they have been going through mentally. She's a consummate actress. She can imitate the way they walk and talk, and even think the way they do. She concentrates her thought on the life experiences of mil millions of people in the past and presence. present. She uses the knowledge she gains from this to visualize the future and to help others. This she does at a great distance by means of her invisible ray. And the ones she helps through suggestion or decision or the one she heals having the slightest idea that she is helping them. It was only later that I found out that similar rays invisible to the eye only of different degrees of strength emanate from every individual. Academician Anarov Akimov photographed them with special devices and published his results in 1996 in the May issue of the magazine Chudusai Pobuta Wonders and Adventures. Unfortunately, we are unable to use these rays as she does. In scientific literature, a phenomenon such as this ray is known as torsion torsion field. Anastasia's worldview is unusual and interesting. What is God, Anastasia? Does he exist? If so, why hasn't anyone seen him? God is the interplanetary mind or intelligence. 
he is not to be found in a single mass half of him in the non-material realm of the universe this is the sum total of all energies the other half of him is dispersed across the earth in every individual and in every man the dark forces strive to block these particles what do you think awaits our civilization in the long term a realization of the futility of the technocratic path of development and a movement back to our prime primal origins you mean to say that all our scholars are immature beings who were leading us into a dead end i mean to say they are accelerating the process they are bringing you closer to the realization that you are on the wrong path and so all the cars and houses we built are pointless yes you're not bored living here alone anastasia alone without television or telephone these primitive things you mention man has possessed them right from the very beginning only in a more perfect perfect form i have them both television and telephone well what is television a device through which certain information is served up to an almost atrophied human imagination and scenes and in story plots or act out I can through my own imagination outline the plot of any story and act out the most improbable situation even take part in them myself just like having an influence on the outcome oh dear i suppose i have not been making myself too clear huh and the telephone every man can talk with any other individual without the aid of a telephone all that is needed is the will and desire of both parties in a developed imagination